Hello! Welcome to episode one of Recipes and Rants, a series where we make some lunch and sit down to have a conversation. Today we're talking about health at every size. In my opinion, this is one of the most misunderstood health movements on the internet. Now, whether you are for or against health at every size, that's fine. I'm not here to drag you for your opinion or try to change your mind, but I am here to educate you and bring you my perspective. If you can respect that, then cool. I would love to hear your perspective in the comments below, as long as we keep it respectful. Feel free to start a conversation, have at it. I'll love to see it. And without further ado, let's make some pasta.
So what even is health at every size? Is it a fat acceptance thing? Is it a social media movement? Most critics would say it's an excuse to remain overweight and unhealthy. But the truth about it is a lot more complex. Health at every size is actually better classified as an alternative public health approach to obesity. It became more popular over the last 15 to 20 years due to increasing research that weight-inclusive approaches to combating obesity aren't working. What does weight-inclusive mean? Well, there are two main approaches to combating obesity, weight-inclusive and weight-exclusive. Weight-inclusive approaches use a person's weight or BMI to determine their overall physical health and to predict the likelihood that in the future the person will develop an obesity-related disease. This actually is the current standard in healthcare today. But how reliable is BMI in determining a person's overall health? According to Harvard Medical School, not very. While in general, BMI usually correlates with conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, liver disease, cancer, and high cholesterol, BMI does not take into account current muscle mass, blood pressure, or current cholesterol and blood sugar levels. It straight up does not measure health. It measures size. After a study that looked into BMI's accuracy in measuring cardiovascular health, researchers concluded that half of those considered to be overweight by BMI actually had a healthy cardiometabolic profile, and a third of those with a healthy BMI had an unhealthy cardiometabolic profile. As a standalone measure of health, it's just not good enough. Weight-inclusive approaches allow doctors to suggest weight loss measures to anyone with a higher than normal BMI, regardless for the reason of their visit. This creates a lot of feelings of shame and misunderstanding for the patient. In some cases, shame can be a motivator for lifestyle change, but it mostly fuels anxiety, low self-esteem, and secrecy. Even in cases where shame does result in weight loss, is it even worth it if it's at the expense of someone's mental health? If the end goal truly is someone's health, is a lose weight at any cost mentality really healthy? Weight loss medication, surgery, and even the eat less, move more approach are weight inclusive strategies that offer very little education on an individual's caloric and nutritional needs. Without access to a nutritionist, what are people supposed to do but fall back into their old habits? In about 40% of cases, people who follow weight-inclusive strategies end up regaining all of the weight and then some within the first year. So clearly, there's a better way out there to approach public health. Health at every size is one alternative. In 2003, the Association for Size, Diversity, and Health coined health at every size. Though principles adapted over time, ASDAH aims to acknowledge social justice and health access concerns while promoting healthy lifestyle through weight inclusivity, eating for well-being, and life-enhancing movement. So basically, in order to say that you support health at every size, you must agree that body shapes and sizes are diverse as hell. That lots of factors play into weight gain and stigma, such as socioeconomic status, race, gender, and age. You also must agree that there is a need for health policies that improve and equalize access to information and services that improve well-being like physical, economic, social, and emotional services. You have to agree that weight discrimination exists, and environments that address these inequalities should be supported. You have to agree that eating should be flexible and individualized based on someone's hunger, satiety, and nutritional needs. And physical activity should allow people of all sizes, abilities, and interests to engage in enjoyable movement. I know that all that might be confusing. I mean, when I first started my research, I didn't realize that health at every size was so intersectional at its core. No one really talks about that on social media. But to really boil it down, you accept your body for its unique shape and composition, you eat what your body needs and asks for, and you move how and when it feels good and because it feels good. An inclusive, accepting, and mental health focused approach sounds positive and super harmless, right? Yes and no. In study, health at every size did show maintained positive effects in dietary behavior, self-efficiency, and improved body image, as well as maintained weight reduction over time. Women especially improved with respect to their disordered eating and chronic dieting habits, which led to less instances of weight cycling, which is basically just the constant gaining and losing weight, which has disastrous effects on long-term health. 
However, health at every size does have limitations. For one, studies on the approach are very new. And participants in completed studies tend to be white females who follow Western cultural norms and have disordered eating habits, which makes its ability to be applied to the general public pretty weak. Also, health at every size studies tend to exclude those in the obesity class two and three category, which means they have a BMI 35 or over. Health at every size also neglects if it is appropriate to apply to those with a genetic predisposition to obesity or to those whose physical health could benefit from weight loss. So what do I think? Honestly, I'm confused. I support health at every size at its core wholeheartedly. I personally have lived and breathed both sides of the spectrum, and I have definitely experienced the benefits that come with following the health at every size approach. I definitely say that I have a more sound relationship with food. I also have a better relationship with physical activity in general. I have less anxiety with missing days at the gym, which has resulted in less gym-related injuries because I better understand my body and when I need to take a day off. I 100% feel less food-focused, and I definitely don't deal with the anxiety of eating and social situations that I used to in the past. I mean, previously, I wouldn't even purchase things from the grocery store out of fear that the moment I got alone, I would just devour the whole thing. I, I don't experience that anxiety anymore, and I haven't binged in a long time. There's a lot of factors that play into that, but honestly, after adopting a health at every size approach, my mental health is thriving. <laughs> However, I do have beef with health at every size. First of all, do I think that intuitive eating is possible for everyone? Kind of, but definitely not at the beginning of their journey. For me personally, as someone who has battled with binge eating disorder since I was literally 12, eating intuitively gives me anxiety. Not because I don't trust my body necessarily, but because I truly believe that my body's on and off switch for hunger cues has been damaged from the years that I've spent with binge eating disorder and I really think it's going to take a long time to heal. Intuitive eating just isn't in the cards for me right now. After years of exploration and self-discovery, I really think that tracking macros is what works best for me. And honestly, any type of tracking goes directly against what Health at Every Size preaches about intuitive eating. I don't track in the typical way that you would be thinking. I don't set a calorie restraint on myself, and when I do follow macros, I don't follow them strictly or think of it as an upper limit. Disclaimer, I have a pretty decent knowledge on nutrition and macros and calorie necessities. So I was able to calculate my own caloric needs and macros for myself. But the only macro that I'm super strict about is my protein intake. Eating enough protein every day is my most important goal. And as for the carbs and the fats, I actually give myself a range to fall in between. One thing I've noticed about myself is that some days my body is really craving carbs and then some days I just end up eating way higher fat and lower carbs. I haven't really figured out what triggers the difference in those days, but I guess the way that I incorporate intuitive eating is listening to those days and allow myself to eat different macros for carbs and fats by the day depending on how I feel. That makes sense. So I guess in a way it's a mixture between tracking macros and intuitive eating. I, I guess I just feel a lot more in control of my nutrition that way. I like knowing exactly what I'm putting into my body, but I don't feel any type of restriction doing this because I give myself some leeway depending on if I'm craving more carbs or fats that day. My second issue more lies with the social media portrayal of health at every size. Do I think that some influencers portray health at every size in the best light? No. I think a big aspect of health at every size becoming more critical as an approach to combat obesity is a person's ability to be honest with themselves. Now, I'm going to say this one time and one time only. Health at every size does not mean that every size regardless of lifestyle is healthy. I cannot stress this enough. To me, what health at every size means is that there is no one single body type or body composition 
or physique that equals health. I think it means that a healthy lifestyle is achievable at every size. In other words, it's never too late to start. You could be 300 pounds or 70 pounds. Both are unhealthy, both are not ideal when it comes to the size that society has decided is healthy. But just because you may be 300 pounds doesn't mean that you can't start incorporating a healthy lifestyle every single day. And no one is allowed to look at you and determine the kind of lifestyle that you're living just based on your appearance. However, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to determine what a healthy lifestyle looks like to you and examine your habits to determine if it aligns with what you view a healthy lifestyle to look like. For me, a healthy lifestyle is pretty simple. Things that are important to me are getting enough sleep, like seven to nine hours a night consistently, drinking enough water. I try to drink at least over 90 ounces of water, but the goal every day is like a gallon. A really important one for me is making sure that I'm eating enough calories. Restriction was something that I've always battled with, so making sure that I'm eating enough calories, my macros are balanced throughout the day, and that I'm practicing moderation without restriction, all of that is what healthy nutrition looks like to me. And the last thing is feel good physical activity. That doesn't mean that every single day I have to be in the gym for an hour and a half, lifting and doing cardio. It's not always that deep for me. Sometimes it could just look like taking a walk, which I've been doing a lot more recently. And I've noticed that walking three miles a day and listening to a business podcast really affects my level of joy a lot more than running a 20 minute sprint hit workout would. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm being completely honest with you, over the last couple of years of my life, my habits didn't align with that, but I've done a lot of work. I've gone to a lot of therapy to unravel the root of my behaviors. And now I can honestly say that the majority of my days of the week align with what I view to be a healthy lifestyle. And even when there's a day that doesn't, I don't beat myself up because I completely understand that I have my whole life to get this thing right. For me, health is not an eight week get shredded challenge. This health thing is forever, you know? And just to go on a little rant, I may be the heaviest that I've ever been in my life, but I had my last physical in November and they did a complete workup, even with blood. My blood pressure was 117 over 70. And when I got the blood work back, everything was completely healthy. I swear to God, I will post it if you need me to. So my BMI can suck it. <laughs> anyway, the point is, I don't know if everyone on social media is being honest with themselves when they preach health at every size. And unfortunately, that has caused the movement as a whole to be viewed negatively. However, I'm not about to call anyone out by name. I'm not about to make a video about them because at the end of the day, I don't know how they're living their life. I don't know what they've experienced. I don't know their traumas. I don't know how they're dealing with them. And it sure as hell is not my job to judge and ridicule. My job is to take care of my individual health. And so is yours. It does confuse me a little bit when these health influencers make video after video talking about big bodied, health at every size extremists claiming that they promote obesity or promote an unhealthy lifestyle. I've seen videos where these health influencers make fun of like fitspo and smaller bodied fitness people, mostly just for like their lack of knowledge on the fitness industry. But I have yet to see a video on a fitness influencer who, and this happens all the time, is recommending super extreme, super restrictive, and straight up disordered diets to their followers. Is that not promoting something that could catastrophically impact someone's mental and physical health? I'm confused. Just keep that same energy. You care about these women's health. You care about the health of their followers, right? So why are you letting these influencers get away with recommending eating next to nothing just to have visible abs? I don't know, man. 
If you ask me, people don't hate health at every size and they sure as hell don't care about a stranger's health online. What they do hate is that a person could feel confident in a body that doesn't fit society's expectations because they can't imagine that freedom for themselves. And that's that on that.